Hey folks, uh, some of you may know me already uh, or have seen my name before, but I'm Art Linger. Um, I am a retired police officer from Waterville, Ohio. Uh, I worked for the city of Waterville for 18 and a half years and uh, I retired a year ago this month, December of 2018. Uh, the reason I am making these videos is hopefully to clear up uh, any misinformation that's out there um, about John Walls um, and also to, to uh, I guess, um, bring the darkness into the light, uh, if you will. And uh, I want to promise you that by the time... Uh, I get done with the series of videos, um, you will have the full picture um, from everything uh, that I have stored up in my file cabinet here. Um, John Walls has been on Facebook, social media, uh, created a fake Waterville uh, Police Department discussion page, which led to the Toledo Blade running an article um, about it. Uh, my name was not mentioned. I don't believe any officers' names were mentioned. Um, but that article was written uh, nonetheless. Um, John Walls uh, has continued to harass me through social media, um, or tried to harass me through social media, um, because he lost at his attempt to uh, have a criminal, excuse me, a civil protection order issued against me. Um, and I, uh, uh, was able to, uh, prove to the court that, uh, everything that he said, uh, was a lie. Um, and, uh, so I am not here to defend myself by no means. Um, I did that in court, uh, and um, this is the actual document that shows that he lost his attempt to have a criminal protection order issued against me, and I'll get back to this later. Um, again, I'm Art Linger, and uh, I uh, believe that John Walls will not stop uh, his attempt to discredit me and to defame uh, myself and those on the Waterville Police Department, regardless of whether or not he won in court. Um, and I've said that time and time again. Um, so I want to create these series of videos uh, to bring to light um, Mr. Wall, this Mr. Wall saga and hopefully clear up um, all of these lies and misconceptions about myself and the fine officers that I used to work with. So bear with me, and um, again, I hope you're here to uh, get educated. Um, I hope you're here to, because you want to hear the other side of the story. Uh, um, please don't threaten me. Please don't send me nasty email or whatever, however you get to me, whatever. Um, that's just not adult, number one. Uh, and number two, number two, um, I won't tolerate it personally. So, uh, anyway, I'm going to get back to you in just a minute here with the next video. I want to try to keep these videos under five minutes. All right, be right back with you. Mm -hmm. Bye. Hello, my name's Art Linger. Again, I'm a retired police officer with the Waterville uh, Police Department. Uh, in Waterville, Ohio. That's the Waterville City Police Department. Uh, I said I'd be right back, and here I am. I think the first thing I need to do is um, explain uh, how I know who John Walls is. Um, again, I started working for Waterville, the Waterville Police Department back in 1999. And years, years ago, um, we would get called to John Walls' house um, he purchased a home right next to a ballpark um, in Waterville. And years ago, he would call the Waterville police um, to complain that kids were get going, or people, kids, people were running into his backyard to retrieve their baseballs 
that would get knocked over there. And uh, he would get upset um, when we wouldn't go and arrest those people uh, for trespassing. So eventually, um, uh, he erected a split, uh, split rail fence along the driveway leading back to the park between the driveway and his property, and he also put up no trespassing signs. Again, people would continue to do that, and when we wouldn't arrest the people for going into his yard, um, he, would, he didn't like that. Um, the other uh, recollection I have or contact I remember having with John Walls years ago uh, was when he was out either jogging or riding his bicycle, I can't remember. Um, but anyway, he would stop by the department to complain that people were uh, driving past him too closely. And when I would ask if he got a description of the vehicle, license plate number, etc., he uh, said no. He said no, but he says what I would do is he says I kicked at the car as they went by, or kicked the car when they went by. Um, so my recommendation to him was, well, next time it happens, um, obviously don't kick at the car, but to get a description of the vehicle license plate. But he got upset anyway when I wouldn't go out and search for the vehicle without any information whatsoever. So those were kind of my... Uh, uh, um, first encounters with John Walls as a Waterville City police officer. Um, now let's uh, let's fast forward um, to 2017, I believe it was 2016 or wait, excuse me, no, 2015. Um, that is a time uh, it was in the summertime, and I'm going to tell you that I got rid of everything. When the court, when I heard that, when my attorney called me and gave me the court's decision that, that, uh, that this case was um, dismissed, um, that, there was, that everything with this case was going to be dismissed to include journal entries, the whole nine yards. There's no grounds for a protection order. He had no, not proved anything to the court. Uh, when I received this, I shredded all of my documents and the shredder is actually being used to hold my phone up. Um, so everything I'm telling you is from my head. Uh, so this next video that I'm going to talk about is going to be about uh, our encounter with John Walls. I believe it's the summer of 2015 and I will be right back with you. Goodbye. Hey there. Art Linger, retired police officer uh, with the City of Waterville, Ohio uh, Police Department. Coming back at you. Um, I'm still working on the same cup of coffee from two videos ago. Again, I'm trying to keep these videos short, under five minutes. We talked about, I've introduced myself, and we've talked about how I come to know Mr. Walls years ago. Uh, let's fast forward to the summer of 2015, I believe it is. Uh, John, uh, I was working uh, with my coworker, Tina, and Tina received a call of a suspicious person on a residential street in Waterville. The dispatcher advised her there was a male subject, gave a description of him walking down the street taking pictures of children who were at a birthday party. They were playing in the front yard at the residence of the complainant. I obviously backed Tina up as her coworker. She went one direction and I went the other. Um, I, as, I, as we were both arriving on scene, um, as I was turning on to the residential, the complainant street, I noticed the male subject walking towards my patrol car in the street and I recognized him as being a resident of Waterville. Let me explain this. I contacted dispatcher and advised the dispatcher that I would be out with the subject. He was a known subject, quote unquote, known subject, okay? And that my coworker and I would be out with him there. I'm gonna stop there and explain what I meant by known subject. Again, a couple videos ago, I explained how I come to know John Walls as a, being a resident of Waterville. That was years ago. I recognize him, he runs, he rides his bicycle in the summertime. I know John Walls to be a resident of Waterville. At the time I called the dispatcher and throughout this incident, 
until I get to the point where I explain when I came to know his name, I did not know his name, nor did my coworker. Okay, and I'll explain that to you in a minute. So anyway, I turn onto the residential street. I recognize John Walls as a known subject walking towards my police car. I know that he lives in the house directly behind me. So remember, the call is for a suspicious person taking pictures of little kids at a birthday party in the front yard of this complainant's residence. I have not had contact with them yet. So as, I'm, as he's walking towards my patrol car, I roll down the passenger side window. My intent is to say, excuse me, your neighbors are calling and complaining that you're taking pictures. Would you please not take pictures or go and introduce yourself, whatever you need to do, but don't you know, just walk by and take pictures. Stop doing what you're doing. That way they don't call the police and we don't have problems with, have neighbor problems. That was my intent. So when I say, excuse me, can I speak to you a second, or words to that effect, with my passenger window down, Mr. Walls continues walking past my police car. Now I know he lives behind me, but I don't remember his name. I'm not even thinking about his name at that point. I immediately get out of my police car, and I said, again, I ask him, excuse me, can I talk to you a second? He's turning around, he's taunting me with his mouth, he's, he's being argumentative. Basically, he's telling me that he knows more about the law than I do. Okay? So, at this point, I do not know who he is. Um, he's ignored my request to talk to me at the, at the side of my car with, while I'm in my car. Um, I would have, I would have just pulled over and said, Hey, he's good. He lives here. No big deal. He he's agreed to stop taking pictures, whatever. That's not what he chose to do. He chose to ignore me, walk past my car when I'm there legally, I was called there. And when I get out of my car continues to be argument or starts being argumentative with me as he's walking towards his house, I'm going to stop there. We're at four minutes and 33 seconds. So I'm going to stop. I've got time to talk some more, and I love to talk. I'll be back with you. Goodbye. Hello, Art Linger here. Um, I think I've made enough videos where I don't need to keep introducing myself. Um, this past video, we talked about, or I talked about, how John Walls refused my attempt to talk to him while I was sitting in my police car as I was approaching the complainant's house um, for the suspicious person complaint. So, my coworker and I, uh, we are now out of our car. We're trying to talk to him. He's being argumentative as he's walking across the street. I comment to him and say, okay, fine. Go back to your house. We'll talk to you over there. If you come back across the street, you'll be arrested for disorderly conduct. Let me say that again. I advised him, that's fine. You keep going into your house. If you come back across the street, you'll be arrested for disorderly conduct, okay? That was the first time. Now, we turn, we go across the street to talk to the complainants. As we're talking with the complainant in their front yard with all the little kids, the complainant looks at me and says, or looks at me and Tina and says, oh look, here he comes, from, he's coming back for more, or words to those effect. I said, oh, we can't have that, or words to that effect. And I turn and I walk back into the street, along my coworkers following me, and we approach him in the street. I can't remember what I told him at that point. I'm sure I advised him again to go back home, or that I had told him to go back home. He began taunting me with the camera. Um, as, he's wa as he's walking back and I'm walking towards him, he's got the camera up there. I, I do remember advising him, that's great because I have a camera too. I have a body cam and it's recording you, okay? So I'm walking towards him and he continues to carry on at the mouth. He's been told a number of times to go home. He was told not to come back across the street or he would be arrested for disorderly conduct. He's got a yard full of children, a yard full of adults, uh, neighbors out there in the street. He's, he's 
uh, what I believe to be intoxicated, uh, whatever the case is, he's being disorderly. So we are in the middle of the road, still arguing with him. And he's, he obviously can see my name tape. He looks over at my coworker and says, and who are you? And as he approaches my coworker, again, he's getting in her face. I put the habeas gravis on him and advise him he's under arrest for disorderly conduct. Mr. Walls does what we call passive resistance, drops down. I have to basically drag him back to the patrol car, basically fighting him to get him in handcuffs. He falls on the ground, refuses him to get in the police car, and I have to call uh, a Metro Parks officer to come and help me and my coworker get him in the car. I could have put him in the car myself, and I did tell him that in court, that had I employed um, uh, uh, some of the uh, um, compliance techniques that I was taught years and years ago, he would have got in the car real quick. Um, but I try to choose the peaceful way, uh, the way out and let him, he's, he, he created his own situation, if you will. It's now three minutes and 45 seconds. Um, at this point, John Walls has been arrested. He's in handcuffs. He's, uh, and he's been placed in the back of my police car, uh, with the help of my coworker, Tina and the, uh, Metro Parks officer. I'm going to sign off now, and I'm going to come back to you after I get a drink of water and uh, maybe a fresh coffee. Hey, Art Linger back at you. Uh, I think in the last video, um, Mr. Walls had been placed under arrest and uh, for disorderly conduct and placed, excuse me, with the help or assistance of um, a Metro Parks officer placed in the back of my patrol car. Excuse me. Um, at this point, uh, to make a long story even longer, Mr. Walls uh, was transported to the police department. Um, he was in the back of my patrol car, and he was never actually removed from the back of my patrol car. Um, but he was transported to the Waterville Police Department to uh, put, get some paperwork together prior to being transported to the jail. At the Waterville Police Department, Mr. Walls was asked for his name and personal information. He did not have any identification on him when he was searched. Uh, he refused to provide his name, date of birth, social security number, any information that we asked him for, he refused to cooperate with us. Um, while he was in the back of the patrol car at the police department, he was flipping my coworker off. Apparently he made a threat to her. He actually told her that I would punch you and I will punch you in the face. Um, uh, and I wasn't allowed to use that in court, by the way. Um, but, uh, no, Mr. Walls was very uncooperative. Um, so I sent, uh, an officer down to Mr. Walls's house. They ran the license plates of the vehicles that was in his driveway, and the vehicles came back to his wife, which I will not mention her name. Um, so they came back. When I heard that, um, I contacted our prosecutor, and uh, which we have to do anyway. And while on the phone with our prosecutor, Mr. Ry Ted Riley, um, uh, he, to narrow this down a little bit, shorten it a little bit, Mr. Riley advised me to charge Mr. Walls with the disorderly conduct and also the failure to provide information to a police officer because Mr. Riley was on the phone with me when I asked Mr. Walls for his name or personal information and he again refused to give it to me. Um, no, I did not that I did not know Mr. Walls's name at that point or any time prior to that. Um, and I still didn't know Walls's name at that point. So I typed up the, uh, excuse me, I uh, got the paperwork that I needed print out um, or my uh, information from the department that I needed to give the jail and I transported him to the Lucas County Jail. While en route to the jail, uh, I asked Mr. Walls if he was gonna be cooperative with the jailers once we got there. And he, he uh, ref 
either told me he wasn't going to be cooperated or somehow indicated that he was not going to cooperate because I remember contacting the dispatcher and requesting a, an arrival party. Uh, of course, folks didn't like that expression, arrival party. It sounds like some kind of mad group of men or something. That's not the case. We have terminology sometimes in law enforcement that we use to help other officers understand the gravity of our situation. Therefore, when we got to the jail, Mr. Walls refused to cooperate with me. I opened the door for him. I gave him the opportunity to come out of the car on his own, on his own power. He refused to do so. I had to call the jailers out, or excuse me, the jailers were already out there. Um, so they obviously were there. They witnessed the whole thing. They had to remove him from my car. He again offered passive resistance, became a dummy, and dummy, dumb weight, and uh, had to be dragged into the jail to the booking counter. Um, once Mr. Walls was booked into the Lucas County Jail and I was released, I came home. He was in jail, and uh, I understand that he was combative with the jailers and he was placed in a cell by himself for his own protection. Uh, he claims that he was refused clothing or he was, he was beaten or whatever he wants to claim. Uh, that's, that's Mr. Walls. Um, that's fine. That's fine. He can say what he wants. Um, but he was put in there for his own protection and that of the jailers. And I believe there's also a jumpsuit laying on the bench in his jail cell if you watch the video. Um, it is 4 minutes and 49 seconds. Um, I'm done with this. Peace out. I'll see you in a bit. Bye. Hey, Art Linger, back at you. Yeah, I'm in the same clothes. Um, got the same coffee cup. It's the same day. I'm retired, so I have all kinds of time to have fun doing this. Um, I'm actually hoping uh, it would be nice to maybe make some, uh, make some new friends and hopefully maybe change some mentality of some people about um, myself, other officers, uh, police, police work, or law enforcement in general. Um, so anyway, when we last talked, John Walls was sitting in the Lucas County Jail and I was back home. Immediately following John Walls' arrest, he, when he came back to Waterville, John Walls, and I want you to hear this correctly, John Walls began stalking myself and other officers on the department throughout the city of Waterville. He would be out riding his bicycle or out jogging with his uh, smartphone. He would stop in the middle of his run to take pictures of us from across the street. He would sneak up on officers at night to try to get them on uh, in an awkward position, whatever his intent was. Um, but anyway, he began stalking me and the officers in Waterville regularly. Um, John Walls charges of disorderly conduct and failure to provide information to a police officer were not dismissed, or excuse me, were not, um, uh, what do you call, uh, just never like it never happened, like me with this. That's the case here, okay? Um, he had all of the video, all of the videos that John Walls had from his bicycle on the, on the towpath trail, um, and all of my body, body cam videos, my, and that of my coworker and everything, the entire videos were used in court um, to prove him wrong, to prove that he was lying, okay? Um, my attorney told me that if the magistrate followed the law, we would win. If she followed her emotions, we would lose. Yeah, because I was pissed in court, you betcha. Um, this guy makes accusations, the type of accusations that he made against me, um, it pissed me off and I, uh, when I think about it I still get pissed because it's horrible that somebody's capable of doing that thing and by the time I get done, I'm off on a little tangent here, but by the time I get done I hope to prove to you that Mr. John Walls of Waterville, Ohio, I'd love to give his address but I won't, um, is a pathological liar and um, I uh, believe uh, Mr. John Walls has some serious issues um, that, that have not yet been um, dealt with. Uh, and I'll get back to that later, too. 
Um, but at three minutes into this, um, again, Mr. Walls began following his arrest for disorderly conduct. Mr. Walls began stalking myself and other officers on the department. I can tell you, and I can't give you a date because as I said, I shredded everything <laughs> from the past, uh, but Mr. Walls actually showed up at my house in Waterville on Overlook Drive uh, in his lime green Ford Explorer uh, one day, I believe it was in February of 2016. And it was a really nice day, and I looked at the archives for the weather that day. I happened to be out, and I was going to wash my truck. And I was pulling a hose out from underneath my workbench. And when I looked up down the end of the driveway, I saw, his, I saw a lime green explorer sitting blocking my driveway, like right in front of my driveway. And I, when I I'm lo looked at the driver, what the first thought was, my neighbor has daycare kids being picked up. She watches some daycare kids. But then there was nobody else around. When I looked a second time, I identified it as being John Walls in the driver's seat, staring me down. He took off, went down the road, went around the block. By the time I got my cell phone to call uh, my coworker, he was back at the apex of the corner there near my house, staring me down. I walked towards him on, in my driveway and motioned to him, come here, if you want to talk to me, come over here. He drove down Overlook, went down to South River Road and took off down the road to his house. Okay. Had the entire Waterville Police Department that was working, everybody was looking for him. His vehicle was already back home. There's a report on file at the Waterville Police Department that you can, that is public record. You can get a copy of it. Um, but that, you know, that's one incident that Mr. Walls, I have never in my 18 and a half years uh, as a police officer had somebody show up uh, in front of my driveway and stare me down like he did. I'm going to stop there. We're over five minutes. Um, so I'm going to stop there and I'll come back and tell you the rest of the story. All right. Goodbye. Hey folks, Art Linger back with you. Uh, retired Waterville, Waterville, Ohio, city of Waterville police officer. And uh, I think uh, summarize a little bit what we've talked about so far. Um, we talked about how myself and our department come to know John Walls, resident of Waterville. Um, we talked about his arrest for disorderly conduct and failure to provide information to a police officer and the fact that he was put on uh, under the umbrella, quote unquote, umbrella of the uh, mommy court um, call of the prosecutor, uh, which required him to meet certain conditions uh, in order to have um, those charges dismissed, um, uh, which he did in fact meet. Um, we talked about how he started stalking myself and other officers on the department with his cell phone, taking pictures of us, flipping us off, um, sneaking up on officers at night. Um, and all of those things can be substantiated um, by the Waterville officers and the reports that are on file about him. Um, I'm sure there's even log entries, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, we talked about him, or I talked about him anyway. Um, John Walls, him as in John Walls, showing up in front of my house in his ve in his personal car, a uh, lime green Ford Explorer, staring me down, trying to intimidate me, um, and <laughs> I did that once before. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, so anyway, um, he did showed up in front of my house, blah blah blah, all that good stuff all while under the umbrella of call of the prosecutor and the report is on file and it's public record and and you're welcome to request that information following um all of this uh sometime in december of 2017 uh if we fast forward um i had an incident with a semi truck and uh, basically, um, I witnessed a semi-truck driver pulling a uh, tanker, a fuel tanker, 
almost run into the rear of a pickup truck of, with two gentlemen in it with a cap on the back. Um, the semi-truck driver was traveling south on the Anthony Wayne Trail and uh, was approaching Farnsworth Road in the center of town. The light was red and apparently uh, he failed to see that the light was red. I don't know what he saw. But anyway, um, he didn't even have time to break. He had to swerve around to the left in the left-hand turn lane. And by the time he got his semi-truck stopped, he was sitting in the middle of the um, intersection of the Anthony Wayne Trail and Farnsworth Road, having almost killed at least those two guys and probably the people in front of them too, um, I believe, wouldn't have had a chance. Uh, that was uh, uh, bad enough uh, when he brought the vehicle to a stop. Uh, he threw his arms up in the air, obviously. I'm sure he soiled his pants. Um, but what really got me was when the light turned green, the trucker, um, who I come to know, I guess his name is Charles. Um, when the light turned green, instead of waiting for the, the folks whom he almost killed to pass uh, legally on the right, he yanked his semi-truck from the left-hand turn lane to the right in front of all of those vehicles to travel, continue his way up the hill, all while uh, screaming whatever he was screaming inside his semi-truck. Um, that got my attention, and I decided to follow, or to, to get him stopped. I was, again, in my personal car, um, and I'm going to finish that story and, and explain how that's connected to John Walls because he decided to post a video of the trucker online. Um, I want to explain how all of that is connected when I come back with you. Uh, we're at our five minutes, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Hello, Art Linger. So as with you last time, we were talking about semi-truck driver Charles. Uh, he... Uh, um, uh, almost uh, killed some folks in Waterville and I witnessed it and uh, the first mistake I made was I turned up in front of him to go up the hill and I stopped in the in the street uh, and got out of my car um, uh, which was not a smart thing to do uh, because I wasn't thinking I wasn't thinking the fact that I wasn't armed I did not have my badge on me um, I had no way of identifying myself as a police officer. I just witnessed this guy almost kill some people, and my adrenaline was through the roof. All I thought, I got to get this guy stopped. Uh, don't know what the problem is. I'm in town. Um, I can get the officers there with me, etc. So I turned to go up the hill. I did not cut him off. I turned. I had plenty of time to get to turn in front of him and go up the hill before he even got the semi moving. I got up the hill and I stopped my car and I exited my vehicle while dialing 911. He pulled up behind me in his semi-truck, stopped. I looked up at him, I was standing in the street, I looked up and I said, I'm dialing 911. He was at the steering wheel with his hands on the steering wheel at the 10 and two position, looking down at me as I'm standing in the middle of the road like a dummy, and he mouths the words, I'll fucking run you over. When I read his lips, he pops the clutch and comes at me, okay? I did not have time to even move. He was moving towards me, and I'm dialing 911. I dive out of the way, and as I'm diving out of the way, I feel the air from the semi-truck pass my legs, my my. My thought was the semi-tractor is going to catch my legs, and fortunately it didn't. Um, so I get in my car. Now I'm really uh, pissed uh, because this guy about run me over. And I'm on the phone with the dispatcher identifying myself to her. She knows who she's talking to. And as I'm explaining to the dispatcher what, this, what I just witnessed with the semi-truck driver, um, she's telling me that somebody is calling in, telling the other dispatcher the same thing. Uh, people thought it was so egregious, they went directly to the police station to report it. Yeah, that's the semi-truck driver. So I just continued to follow him at normal highway speed. Um, I called for back the officers for marked units, and uh, it took until almost Napoleon before they got him stopped. 
uh, not because he was doing anything wrong. He was driving perfectly fine all the way there. Uh, didn't have any problems. In fact, I was on the phone with the dispatcher and I told the dispatcher, I think, that uh, I was tempted to just have everybody just call it off or whatever. But I thought that since it was since I had witnessed what I witnessed in Waterville, that he needed to at least be stopped and checked out to see what's going on. So they got him stopped in uh, Henry County, got the truck driver stopped in Napoleon. Um, and uh, make a long story even longer, uh, our, lieutenant, our lieutenant decided to give the guy a ticket for reckless op, let him go on down the road, and he was going to deal it with, they were going to deal with that later. Um, the mistake I made was going into work that afternoon. Um, and when I come back, I'll go from there. Uh, Mr. Charles again was given, or the truck driver Charles was given a ticket um, for reckless operation. He was allowed to continue on down the road. Our officers went back home. I went home. Uh, my lieutenant asked me that afternoon if I was okay to come into work at four. And I said, absolutely, I'm okay. Uh, even though I was about to have an adrenaline dump and I should have never went into work that evening, um, but I did. But when I come back, I'll explain where it all went from there. All right, hope you uh, stay tuned. Thanks. Bye-bye. Mm, hey, Art Linger, uh, back with you. Um, I'm actually really enjoying this. Uh, it's uh, pretty therapeutic, if you ask me, to talk about stuff. Um, and I want you to know that uh, that everything I'm saying in these videos is uh, um, not just truthful and 100% honest, but I want you to know when I'm telling the story, it's coming from the heart. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I just hope that you're able to get to know me a little bit better um, in these videos that you can see my emotions and, and that such a thing, that sort of thing. Um, we, I mentioned about uh, the truck driver, Charles, that incident, he went on down the road. Now, before I continue, I want you to understand that at this point, the incident with Charles, the truck driver, has nothing, absolutely, John Walls has no knowledge of that incident whatsoever, okay? Um, he has no knowledge of any of that, uh, and um, uh, it's really ironic how all of this kind of went down. Um, I've been on the department for 18 and a half years. I'm 56 years old um, right now. I spent 20 years in the United States Army. I'm getting older. Uh, and, you know, there's, cert there's certain things that, um, that we don't like to talk about, okay? Um, especially men my age, uh, you know, especially police officers because there's stigma attached to mental health and all of those types of things. I'm a human being, folks, um, and uh, I'm sure you are too, if you're listening to this and you're understanding what I'm saying. Um, depression is a real thing, as is um, any type of mental, health, mental illness. Um, my heart has always gone out to those that um, have uh, that struggle, and that was one of the things that pulled me into police work, because I thought I could help some people. And I am here today to say that I know I have because those people have directly responded to me in the past and told me that I've been directly involved in helping them uh, continue to live, honestly. Um, but anyway, back to the story. I should have never went into work. I went into work that evening, and when I got into work, I, uh, my coworker was reading one of the witness statements from a lady had that, or a gentle, lady or gentleman who had come to the apartment to, that thought what they witnessed was so egregious that they needed to report it right away. And when I read the witness statement and uh, was able to look at the situation in the witness's eyes, see, see the situation in the witness's eyes, um, I got pissed. And uh, especially, um, you know, what is after what I had witnessed, um, it really upset me. And uh, again, having that adrenaline dump and everything, um, I should have never went into work that night. 
Um, I got into a conversation with my supervisor, who is a new super, newer supervisor on the department. So, of course, um, he's going to be a little bit more sensitive. Uh, and the, the worst of Art Linger um, came out that, that evening. And it wasn't directed towards my supervisor, obviously. It was just frustration and anger and and uh and a lot of uh a lot of f words and a lot of shit words and you name it um and i was pissed and i put in a sick slip and i went home for four days and what i put it i filled out a sick a sick slip and uh my time card and when i went going out the back door i threw my stuff in the in the drawer and when I shut the file cabinet, apparently I shut it hard enough that I dented the file, the uh, outside of the filing cabinet. Okay, so that's the story with the trucker and where it ended up that the evening of that trucker trucker incident with Charles. Um, at this point, John Walls has no knowledge of that trucking incident. Um, I'm not even thinking about John Walls. I'm just thinking about how I nearly, my life was nearly ended and the lives of others were nearly ended by a uh, foolish truck driver um, who, who uh, um, in my eyes, uh, uh, um, is a foolish truck driver after what I witnessed and after what I've seen um, in the videos on YouTube. We're at the five minute mark and uh, I'm gonna let you go and I'll be back with you to continue on um, from there. We'll see you in a bit, bye. Hey folks, Art Linger. I think the last time I was with you, just a couple minutes ago, I uh, had threw my time card in the file cabinet, slammed the, slammed the file cabinet drawer and went out the back door um, on my four days of sick time and uh, um, anyway, the next morning, as I said, uh, at this point, this trucker story has nothing, this, this has, has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with John Walls. John Walls made this story, uh, part of his saga, okay? So this is just a police incident, um, that kind of pushed me, uh, uh, over the edge, if you will. Um, I had been, uh, heading in that direction of, of uh, retirement, had a year and a half to go. And police work became, for me, so overwhelming that one day was like a month, and a month was like a year. And I'm not gonna get into why that was. Um, I'm just gonna tell you that uh, when I got into law enforcement um, 20, uh, 20 some years ago, uh, I have some police background before while I was still in the Army. When I got into law enforcement 20-some years ago, my perspective on things was a whole lot different than they are today. And uh, the way I conduct myself and the way I do business um, is a lot different than a lot of younger officers coming on the force today. Uh, and that uh, being drawn into situations that could potentially cause me harm or cause me to lose my retirement uh, or cause me to get involved in a lawsuit of no fault of my own because somebody's civil rights were violated um, and the things that I was witnessing on the job, uh, I just... It just, uh, I just got tired of it. Um, every day going into work, I was so afraid uh, that I was going to get pulled into something that um, that was just going to destroy what I had, what I had already, you know, accomplished for so long. And then suffering with um, mental illness is a stigma. Uh, it was a stigma years ago when I was in the service with people, and it's a, it's a stigma still today. I've seen it in society. Um, but it is. And uh, um, part of my problem uh, that I recognized on my own um, was that, uh, um, you know, and that I saw my doctor for was that I suffer with age related depression. And I have also recently been diagnosed with PTSD. And I can talk to you about that later, too. I'm free as free can be, folks. 
Um, I went home that day after having slammed the file cabinet and feeling awful and uh, feeling that um, it just, I had reached a point in my life, not just my career, but in my life where I just couldn't, I just couldn't continue to work, couldn't continue to, to, to be work in that capacity or be in that situation as a police officer. Um, the chief called me the next day and says, Art, um, you know, you slant, you know, you dented the file cabinet. And I said, no, I didn't. I'm sorry. Charge me with criminal damage, whatever you want to do. I said, I totally understand chief. Um, you know, uh, do what you need to do, uh, blah, blah, blah. And he said, he says, I hate to have to do this to you. He says, but I'm going to ask you to go talk to somebody. And I understand, I understood what he was talking about. And, um, I told him, I said, well, you know, um, I need some time to think about that. And, uh, although I had already made up my decision, um, at the moment that I told him that, um, I just wanted to make sure that the decision that I had already made was the decision that I, that I was going to stick with. Um, so anyway, we're at four minutes and 25 seconds. Again, John Walls is not part of the trucker incident. Um, he made that part of his own, his own saga. And, um, uh, I went home on, uh, for some sick time, spoke with the chief. <laughs> and, and when I come back with you, I'll tell you what happened after that. All right. Bye. Hey, just wanted to look at you for a minute. And, uh, yeah, you're as delightful looking as you were the last time I was on here. Um, uh, anyway, yeah. Well, if we can't have some fun, too, then I don't know. Sorry for moving my camera all around. Again, I'm Art Linger. Um, I think the last time... Uh, the last video a few minutes ago, I ended with talking about how the chief um, wanted me to undergo a fit for duty evaluation. And uh, um, I contacted the chief the next morning and went in and spoke with him, the lieutenant, and let them know it was the hardest conversation I've ever had with anybody in my life, um, but let them know that I uh, already know um, that I'm not fit for duty. I've made that determination about myself, um, you know, and uh, uh, it, it had been coming for quite some time. And the trucker, the trucker incident uh, kind of that is what actually pushed me over the edge. Um, I'm 56 years old. I've got my military retirement behind me. Uh, 20 years in the service there. I served the city of Waterville, I believe, honorably for the last 18 and a half years, or for 18 and a half years. And um, I had enough time to pull the plug and retire, although you know, I screwed myself in a way. But uh -uh, that's not how I look at it. And um, so I'm happy, happy in retirement. And um, my heart goes out to all of you out there that suffer with any kind of mental health issues, whether it be depression, PTSD, which I also suffer with, um, or anything, uh, I'm with you. And I understand the struggle that you deal with every single day. Um, therefore, I turned my resignation letter in. Um, the chief called me an hour later and said, hey, um, you know, <laughs> We need you need to change this re resign word to retire, and um, I am thankful. I thank the Lord every day for the city of Waterville, uh, the, the the from the city administrator all the way down to the to the last the lowest person in seniority that I worked with there. Um, I think they're all good people, uh, and I think the 99.9% .9 of the citizens of Waterville. Um, can be proud that they have a police department that like they have. Um, and I'm off on a tangent, but I just think it's very unfortunate that John Walls feels the way he does towards the people that are sworn to protect him uh, in the city of Waterville, because regardless of how mean he is to them or how many times he flips them off, uh, if he is called, if they are called to his house, they're going to respond like they would respond to any other citizen in the city of Waterville. And I know that to be true. So back on track. 
uh, you know that I now you know that I resigned that day, December 5th, 2017. That morning, I turned my resignation letter in. I retired that day, or I, I turned my re, re, uh, resignation letter in, and the city of Waterville was gracious enough to let me retire. Uh, um, and, and that f forever will will melt my heart because I know that I um, always serve them honorably. And um, we're at the four minute mark. Um, where we're going to go next is uh, what happened that afternoon, the morning of December 5th, 2017. That's my dog shaking the camera, not me. Uh, I, the morning of December 5th, 2017, I turned my resignation letter in and was allowed to retire effective December 7th, 2017. I'm going to tell you what happened the afternoon of December 5th. 2017 when I come back. Stay tuned. Bye. Hey, Art Linger back with you. Uh, when I last uh, left you, um, I had mentioned that I retired uh, December 5th, 2017, the morning thereof. Um, that afternoon, uh, my dog and I I uh, decided to go jogging, as I do every other day. At least I try to. And that's been something I've done ever since, obviously, 1980. Okay, that's when I first joined the Army. Um, anyway, so we decided to go jogging that afternoon. And, again, that's a therapy that I love. You know, you, you get a lot off your, off your mind and everything. And so we jog from my house on Overlook Drive... On the I live kitty corner to Overlook and Hillside, if you looked at a map. We jog south on Overlook Drive until it comes down and it go around the corner and down the hill. And it meets up with the Anthony Wayne Trail. They have a beautiful new bike, tr bike path on the other side, which would be the west side of the Anthony Wayne Trail. So we run across the trail. We run down the bike path till you get to the quarry. We run back across the Anthony Wayne Trail to Farnsworth Park. Lot one, pick up the towpath trail, and we run south along the trail along the river there to our designated turnaround point. That's the route that we took that day. We get to our turnaround point, we're on our way back. As we approach the shelter house at Lot one, Farnsworth Park, I hear a bicycle coming up behind me. My dog and I move off the trail, let the bicyclist pass. pass we continue jogging. We get up closer to the shelter house and I notice that the bicyclist is stopped along the side of the trail. So we just keep jogging. You know, no big deal. As I approach, I observe the person to be Mr. John Walls. Okay? So, as I approach him, I say, uh, can I help you? Do you need anything? Do you want anything? And I'm jogging along and he says, nope. I'm good. Okay. I continue on my way. Okay. And I'm jogging along and we get to where uh, I had come across the trail to pick up the towpath trail. I had come across the Anthony Wayne trail there at lot one. We get to the parking lot area there and I hear his bicycle coming up again from behind. So we again step off the trail and I let him go by. He goes by. Nothing said. I didn't say anything, he didn't say anything, no words were spoken, okay? So he goes along the towpath trail heading north on south towards South River Road and he would continue down South River Road towards his home. I and Duke, my dog, we cross the parking lot like we had come, go across the Anthony Wayne Trail at the quarry, pick up the new bike trail and head back north towards Overlook Drive, my street. As we're approaching Overlook Drive, I look up ahead and I see Mr. John Walls riding his bicycle down the hill down Overlook Drive heading towards the Anthony Wayne Trail. And I think, I'm thinking to myself, son of a bitch. He's coming back, he's coming back. What is he doing? He's harassing me, he's stalking me. Okay, 
So that's what I'm thinking. So whatever. I've passed him before when he's out jogging and I have my hoodie on and I put my hoodie down. So he, I don't know if he ever knew that that was me running or what with my dog. Okay. Um, but, uh, you know, you typically don't, when I'm jogging with my dog, I typically don't pass people on bicycles. Okay. So he came up from behind me. I want you to understand. He approached me from behind on the towpath trail on my return run. As I get up to my street, I see him coming down the hill on Overlook and approaching the trail. And I thought, son of a bitch. Now let's see if he comes towards me or if he goes, if he goes right towards downtown. Sure enough, he crosses the Anthony Wayne Trail, makes a left, and now he's running toward, or riding his bicycle towards me as Duke and I are jogging. So naturally, when he passes me, I'm going to say something, and I did. I turned, stop, I stopped jogging, I turned, and I said, Mr. Walls, I said, wait a second, Mr. Walls, wait a second. I said, stop, stop. When I come back, I'll tell you what happened. See you in a bit. Hey, Art Linger. Hey, yeah, so I was telling you about my encounter uh, with Mr. John Walls um, while I was out jogging the day that I turned in my uh, retirement resignation slash retirement letter. Okay, so let me continue there. Um, so anyway, as John Walls approaches me uh, as I'm returning home, uh, he passes me again on his bicycle, and of course I stop, like, you know, why, why are you harassing me? So I stop, I turn, I say, Mr. Walls, I say, stop. I say, wait a second. I say, stop and talk to me. Wait a second, Mr. Walls. He looks back, but he continues pedaling, and I said, that's fine. So I said, I'm yelling, now I'm raising my voice at him because uh, he's riding away. So I yell at him, I said, hey, uh, Mr. Walls, I said, for your information, I said, I, I resigned this morning, and I said, if you continue to harass me, I'm going to file a report against you for harassment, okay? And, and trust me, uh, he continued riding his bicycle, so I yelled a couple choice words, I called him a fucking pussy, okay? whoop de doo I was pissed. I'm like, why are you, why do you keep harassing me? Why do you have to harass us? You know? Um, and, 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 uh, uh, so anyway, um, he went on his way and I went on my way home, went back up overlook and went home with my dog. Okay. Um, that afternoon I got done, uh, you know, getting cleaned up and everything. I went into the Waterville police department to uh, clean out my desk and, and turn in some gear, whatever I was doing. It was just basically out processing from the department. And uh, while I was there, I was getting ready to leave and I, I uh, got the chief and the lieutenant's attention. I said, would you do me a favor? I said, the next time you see Mr. Walls, I said, would you inform him that I'm no longer a police officer on the Waterville Police Department and he can quit harassing me? And uh, um, I was then informed, and I can't remember who, which one told me, but I was then informed that Mr. Walls had attached video uh, recording devices to the front and the back of his bicycle. And um, I said, oh, really? And I said, well, isn't that interesting? And, of course, you know, that obviously told me that he was trying to get uh, uh, me or whoever um, in, in a, in a situation or, or whatever, trying to get our, trying to get us riled up, or I don't know what he's trying to do with it. Obviously, who puts, who puts recording devices on the front and the back of their bicycle? And then, then, then comes up behind, uh, behind you on the towpath trail. I don't know. John Walls does. Now, I will tell you that at this point, I will tell you that Every single encounter I've had or contact I have had in my entire 18 and a half years in Waterville with Mr. John Walls was because Mr. John Walls put him in my sp put himself in my space. Never have I put myself in John Walls' space and done the things that he's accused me of doing, i.e. stalking him, his wife, his family, uh, you know, driving past his house, etc., etc. Okay? Never. And I'll, I would take a polygraph, and in fact, I was uh, actually mentioned that to my attorney, uh, that I would be more than willing to take a polygraph with Mr. John Walls 
um, and then let the outcome of that, uh, you know, um, say its own thing. Polygraphs aren't perfect. That's why you can, that's why they're not accepted in court in a court of law. Um, but I, I think it'd be kind of fun to be honest with you. Uh, but we're at the four, 403 mark, and I kind of got off track a little bit here on a little tangent. My dog is trying to get in my lap, and I can't even remember what I was talking about. <laughs> but that's what happens when you turn 56 years old. Um, so, no, uh, I went through the bicycle uh, incident with John Walls um, and, uh, you know, learned that he was trying to entrap myself or somebody else by by using, uh, putting cameras or recording devices on his bicycle. Um, so I was nonetheless, um, uh, you know, privy to that information. When I come back with you, I'm gonna tell you what happened following the uh, um, towpath trail uh, contact with him. And I, I really think you're gonna enjoy, it's just gonna get better for you. So I hope um, I'm not boring you to death, but um, I'll see you in a little bit. Hey folks, Art Linger. I'm still going at it here. Um, I figure I get these videos done because it's going to take a heck of a long time uh, to get these uploaded. But um, anyway, when I left you, uh, we had talked about uh, how I come to know uh, John Walls and we, come, as a police department, come to know John Walls and um, uh, how he was and... Uh, then we talked about uh, the incident where John Walls was arrested for disorderly conduct and how he began stalking myself and others on the department and actually showed up in front of my house. Um, and then how uh, he um, connected, how that connected with uh, the trucking incident and my uh, um, decision to retire from the force. And then that day, I, that decision uh, retirement was uh, letter was put in. Um, the uh, I should say re resignation letter was put in. I met uh, John Walls, uh, had contact with me. I should say uh, not once but twice on the towpath trail. Um, and then following the towpath trail, a couple of days later, I was greeted by a sheriff's deputy at my home in Waterville who was there to serve me papers uh, from none other than John Walls. Um, following the uh, contact that I had with him on the towpath trail, he uh, went down and uh, told a bunch of lies, horrible lies, to the Lucas County Common Pleas Court and convinced them to grant him a temporary protection order protecting him and his uh, family against me none other than a, a Waterville police officer. Um, I therefore uh, spent the next, uh, at least this last year, which is the first year of my retirement, def uh, defending myself against these lies in court, um, having uh, um, experienced multiple uh, uh, postponements because of him, um, I, at some point, even agreed to sign a letter with him, uh, agreeing not to have, not to, basically, we both go our separate ways and leave each other alone. I've done, although I've done nothing wrong, and I said, hey, if that's what will get him off my back, no problem. Um, I had sold my house in Waterville. I moved, uh, moved away. I bought another house. And um, I don't have on planning to have any contact with John Walls for the rest of my life. Um, as I said, every single contact in my life, any time I've had any knowing of John Walls, has been because he's placed himself in my presence, in the presence of others on the Waterville Police Department. Not because I put my, myself there. Uh, that's just uh, demented thinking. So anyway, he has his temporary protection order issued against me, multiple delays. Um, we go to court, all of the videos, the entire body cam videos, the videos that he used on his bicycle, um, all of that information was used against him in court to defend, to, to defend against his lies. And um, uh, in, in, the, in the end, um, the truth prevailed. 
and that's that's all that matters. Um, the magistrate was able to look at everything, and she followed the law. And uh, um, with that, um, sh she found in my favor, and I appreciate that. I don't understand where she was coming from um, as far as the, uh, um, you know, she her understanding how anybody could feel, you know, having met up with me on the trail like that. Um, I didn't meet up with John Walls. As I said, John Walls rode towards me. And if you watch all the body cam videos, um, I will guarantee you, you will come to that same conclusion. I guarantee 100%. If you watch all the body cam videos uh, of everything that I've said thus far on these videos here on, on YouTube and Facebook, you will find that um, I am telling the truth and you will come to the same conclusion as me. In fact, you'll wonder why I haven't, I betcha you will come, you will ask the question, why haven't I taken some type of action legally against him? Um, and, uh, you know, we can get into the legalities of that, about defamation and stuff. I'm not an attorney, um, but I've read a lot about it. And uh, um, uh, does it rise to that level? Eh. Is it worth my effort? Um, eh, eh, I don't know. I don't have any money to do that. Um, so uh, um, it would, it would, I think it might take a little bit more than that anyway. Um, but I just want to get the truth out there and want um, him to stop spreading lies and doing what he's doing. Um, but that's up to him. I don't have any control over what he says or does. Um, I only have any, uh, control over what I say and do. And with that, we're at 5 minutes and 33 seconds, so I'm going to bid you farewell for a few minutes, and we'll talk to you in the next video. Bye. Hey, folks. Art Linger. I think I'm almost done. Um, I've actually enjoyed uh, talking with all of you. Um, when I left you in the last video, um, John Walls uh, was seeking a permanent... Uh, um, protection order against me, um, him being the protected person, him and his family. He had his day in court. Uh, John Walls dragged his wife into court. Um, she testified to nothing. Uh, her testimony was useless, as was Barb Bruno, um, Waterville City Councilwoman. Um, he dragged her into court. She tried to testify as to what was discussed in the closed-door uh, hearing, executive session, whatever they call it, upon my uh, resignation slash retirement from the city of Waterville, Ohio, um, and the court wouldn't allow it. Uh, uh, I testified in court and used all of the video evidence that Mr. Wallace had along with all of the video evidence that we had uh, on our body cameras, which you folks have, haven't seen any of that, most of that anyway, um, to disprove, uh, you know, um, all of John Walls' lies. And uh, what a horrible thing to have to do. And, um, but in the end, um, the magistrate uh, found in my favor and um, after looking at all of the evidence, uh, fortunate, fortunately she followed the law and uh, she didn't, you know, according to my, what my attorney <laughs> said, going, she didn't go by her emotions because I was emotional in court. And um, that goes back to what we talked about, uh, about uh, depression and such. Um, at the time I was in court, um, I hadn't even been to my doctor yet. Uh, so I was still um, suffering from the depression and again, um, having to deal with all of these other issues uh, outside of my uh, career. So we went to court, he had his day. Um, shortly thereafter, um, I got a call from my attorney a couple weeks later telling me that the magistrate had found in our favor. And uh, me and my attorney did a little um, victory dance on the phone. And then we, uh, I basically left him by saying, well, now I can finally put this John Walls thing behind me. It's done. It's over with. And uh, I was happy. I was sitting there with my elderly mother at the time. And uh, I said, yeah, I knew that she, I knew I had faith in God above that she would uh, um, 
see through see through all of his lies. Um, that's how I'm going to put it because that's the way it is. And then I got a letter from the court um, telling me um, that all of this was expunged. That means gone. You can search on the Lucas County Common Pleas Court docket. Um, type in my name, Arthur Linger, A-R-T-H-U-R-L-A-N-G-E-R, -E and there's nothing there. Um, and this is James D. Bates. Uh, you know, um, he lost. He apparently uh, got the same information. Uh, this says that um, the magistrate states that one of the following events has occurred. The period of notice of objection to the magistrate's order denying, denying a civil stalking protection order after a full hearing in this matter has expired and no objection or appeal has been filed. That's right. No objection or appeal. Hear me again. No objection or appeal. John Walls lost his attempt to have me have a civil protection order issued against me. He wants to see the bracelets put on my wrist. He lost. He had an opportunity to file an appeal, and he didn't do it. Why? Because there's nothing there. He has nothing, okay? And there is nothing. I have nothing to hide. And... Um, uh, when I got this letter and the phone call, the phone call was the best. The letter was nice, too, along with this telling me everything was expunged. So there's nothing there, folks. But John Walls, uh, John Walls would like you to believe that there is. When I come back, I'll tell you what he did next. Bye. Hey, Art Linger. Thanks for uh, bearing with me. Um, I hope you haven't been too bored. Uh, and I, but I, I do hope sincerely that, um, that, uh, you, um, may have had some of your questions answered, uh, or maybe see, can see a, a, the second side of this whole thing. John Walls went to court. Uh, he lost in court, um, had a chance to appeal, uh, object to the magistrate's ruling. He did not do that. Um, I was happy. It's all over with. But no, it's it, 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 uh, as far far from over as far as John uh, Walls is concerned. Now he wants to use um, Facebook, social media um, to perpetuate his lies and his deranged attempt to discredit myself and others. Um, that would be, uh, say, the Waterville uh, Police Department here uh, in Waterville, Ohio. Okay. Um, and as I said a long time ago, I don't think regardless of what the outcome would, would have been with the court hearing, uh, John Walls would continue to um, try to discredit me and others and continue to try to harass and that type of thing. Um, uh, the only thing he hasn't done yet, and I'm not going to give him any ideas, um, is show up in front of my house here where I'm living now. And... Um, uh, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be wise for him to do that anyway uh, um, but uh, anyway um, that's the John Wall saga um, I mean that's really that's really all it is I know there's probably um, some other things that I'm not um, remembering right now but again um, I want to say that uh, um, you know, he lost in court. Now he's using social media. Um, I believe he's just, he's doing it to gain attention. Um, that's my, not my intent with any of these videos. It's to clear up the lies that are out there. I figure if he's able to use social media, um, to perpetuate all of these lies with these video segments and stuff that he's pictures of stuff that he's putting out there and everything, um, then I am fully in my right um, to create my own um, videos and uh, give them, give you the opportunity to view them and make your own uh, decision about who you believe or, or what. Um, I am retired. I'm happy. Uh, I am uh, taking care of my elderly mother 
taking care of my two dogs who are, uh, as, as you probably don't know, Duke and Daisy, uh, but my two dogs there who are laying in the kennel, they're in there voluntarily. That's just what they're, they do. <laughs> so um, I just want to say that uh, um, I am a peace-loving man. Uh, we all have our problems. Life, uh, you know, I'm just trying to get through this thing we call life, and like you are. And, uh, um, uh, you know, I love my fellow officers, and uh, I hated to leave law enforcement. Um, but um, it was my time, and uh, here I am, and I, like I say, I'm happy, and I'm looking forward to living the second half of my life uh, in peace and harmony. And um, if there's anything that, you, that I can do for you uh, as a viewer, um, please uh, uh, let me know. Um, for those of you that want to spread uh, hate and, um, and just help... Uh, uh, John Walls, if those of you that want to help him perpetuate uh, his lies, you can continue to do that. But I just ask that you not leave those types of com nasty comments. Um, on my videos, if you have legitimate questions, hey, I'm more than happy and willing to answer them for you. And I guarantee you it will be a truthful answer. If I don't have an answer, I'm not going to give you one. I'm going to tell you I don't know the answer to that question. Google it, whatever, okay? I mean, try to do some research and, and try to answer your own questions before you ask me those law enforcement questions because I'm not a cop anymore. I'm happy being a civilian. Uh, I'm happy jogging with my dogs on these sunny mornings and watching football games on, on uh, you know, Thursday uh, and Sunday, Sunday nights and days and all of that. So, God, uh, peace be with you and uh, God bless. Bye-bye. Hey folks, uh, Art Linger. I uh, it's uh, Saturday. Uh, let's see, eleven about eleven thirty, eleven twenty-two, something like that. Um, there's just a few things that I uh, thought I would um, uh, wanted to touch bases on, um, and I should say good morning first of all. Um, but just a couple things I wanted to touch bases on. Um, one most important is I don't think I actually uh, was clear on exactly when I come to know John Walls' uh, name. Um, that was at the jail. Uh, I was going to book him as John Doe, and the uh, jailer walked up to me um, at, prior to him being booked and handed me his printout, and they, they, they found him. I actually, I can't remember the name. I thought that, I, that, that uh, what his name might be, um, but when I looked him up on that name up on Facebook, uh, it wasn't John Walls, obviously. Um, but the jailer found one of the jailers found him, uh, found his name. They identified him somehow. Um, I do not remember how they did that. Uh, to be honest with you, the jailer walked up and handed me the printout, and that's when I then I recognized his name when I saw John Walls because it is it is quite unique. Um, anyway, so that was where I learned of John Walls' name, which was good, because I'd rather not book him as John Doe. Anyway, um, I also wanted to uh, talk about Overlook Drive, where I used to live, um, so you understand when, when I said he came, dr came down the hill on Overlook Drive, how he got to that point. Uh, I mentioned that uh, I was running north on the Anthony Wayne Trail towards Overlook Drive when I saw John Walls riding down the hill on my street after having uh, him had ride, riding up on me on the trail. Um, Overlook Drive is connected between the Anthony Wayne Trail at the Dollar Waterville Dollar General store there on the corner. Um, and if you go up Overlook Drive and around to the left, then you go down. My house um, would be just past the first driveway past Hillside Drive, which is on the right. My house is uh, the house past Hillside on the left. And uh, But anyway, you go down Overlook to Hillside, make a right, and you go down the hill, uh, go down Hillside, and it dead ends into South River Road. If you were to make a left, you would go toward John Wall's house, you make a right and go south on South River, and that goes out to the uh, um, the Wat old Waterville Bridge, um, where you can pick up the Towpath Trail and then jog along the Anthony Wayne Trail. 
So yeah, he took the route. Uh, he went north coming from when we, he, he came upon me on the trail. He went uh, north on South River Road. He, he would have made a left on Hillside, came up the hill, then made a left there at the corner on Overlook and went down Overlook and then it goes to the right down the hill and then it meets back up with the trail. And then he came across the trail and that's how he met up with me the second time. So that gives you an idea and all of that is on his bicycle video. His whole bicycle ride uh, is on that video. And I can tell you that the, the magistrate w did not, uh, did not um, uh, view that entire video even in court. Uh, she watched a portion of it and then she watched that video on her own, excuse me, uh, watch that video on her own prior to making her ruling um, or rendering a decision in the case. Uh, finally, uh, um, I, another thing I thought about that I'd like you to think about is uh, for a guy who uh, is supposed to be afraid of me or whatever uh, for in fear for his uh uh, safety or that of his family for for a guy that would you know go down and say all the things um, the horrible things that he said um, to the court um, to have this uh, that temporary protection order issued in the first place um, and then to go to court and go through a full hearing and go through all of that only to lose in court um, because uh, you know um, he had nothing in the first place. Um, is astound, astounds me to begin with, but what even more astounds me is the fact that he would continue to um, do what he's doing on Facebook, now attacking the police chief personally and, um, uh, you know, spreading all of these lies and such. Frohlich uh, Weihnachten, meine Freund, Deutsche Freunde, ne? Yeah, and um, Merry Christmas to the rest of you. And God bless, and uh, if... Uh, you know, you have any questions again, get back with me again. Merry Christmas and have a happy new year if I don't see you before then. Bye bye. Hey folks, Art Linger coming back at you uh, with what I believe to be, I think it's the 19th edition of To Tell the Truth. Uh, um, just a few things I wanted to uh, cover with you today. I wanted to talk a little bit about probable cause, um, preponderance of the evidence, proof beyond a reasonable doubt. Uh, just a few things that are on my mind here, um, and I'll try not to move my camera around too much. Uh, I want to go back to John Walls' arrest um, when we arrested him for disorderly conduct and failure to provide information. Um, let's define, first, let's define probable cause. Uh, if I remember correctly, after a year in law enforcement, out of law enforcement, um, it's what a reasonable person would believe that a crime is being committed or is being has been committed. Uh, and that a particular person or persons is responsible for committing that crime. So that's probable cause. Give you an example. Um, you're at Kroger's or at, at a grocery store and you witness a couple people, I'm going to say people because it could be juveniles, adults, whoever. You uh, witness a couple people um, what, uh, you, that you believe to be involved in a drug transaction. You see one person hand the other person um, what you believe to be some money, and then the other person hands that person back something in their hand, and they part ways, okay? So now you've just witnessed what you believe to be a drug transaction. We get there, you tell us the story, and we have to use that information that you give us to develop that probable cause, okay? Now, if I saw the same thing as you, I could reasonably believe that that was a drug transaction. So now you understand probable cause in, in a nutshell. Um, okay, so... When I arrived on scene to that suspicious person call and identified John Walls as being a known person, not going to cover that again, um, and he walked past my patrol car, refused to stop and talk to me when I rolled down my win passenger window, um, you know, at that point, uh, you know, we got the call down there of a suspicious person, okay, we got to figure out why he's suspicious, we know he's got a camera, that type of thing. Now. Within 30 seconds after I got out of my patrol car, I had established probable cause to arrest him, okay? He went back across the street. Now, when he came back the second time, it's over with. I mean, I didn't even have to talk to him. We could have walked up and put the handcuffs on him. Had probable cause to arrest, okay? That's a legal arrest. 
Um, there is no civil rights violations or anything like that. There's policies. We put handcuffs on everybody. We, uh, you know, we arrest. Um, they're transported to the jail. There's policies down there, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So now, after his arrest, when John Walls began stalking myself and others on the department, I deliberately stopped driving by his house. Because when I leave my house on Overlook, I could either go down south, north on South River to work, downtown Waterville, or I could go out Overlook to the trail and take the trail into work. So it, I used to go down South River and go past his house, no, you know, and never even had any issues with that because I didn't know John Walls. After all of this stuff happened, I told the chief, the lieutenant, people I work with, we had conversations. I said, I don't even go by his house anymore. I don't want to see the guy. I don't want to have to see him come out of his house. I don't even want to look at him, okay? So I would go down the trail back and forth to work uh, just to deliberately avoid his house. Um, so he files this uh, protection uh, complaint to have a protection order issued and, and uh, carries it on for about a year. Um, civil, civil court, preponderance of the evidence. Evidence. All you need is a little bit of evidence, okay? A little bit. Preponderance of the evidence is very, very, very little evidence. Went through all of that. Year later, court says there's nothing, okay? And uh, the case is, uh, the case is um, expunged, not just dismissed. It's expunged. Um, so then, that's not good enough for him. So then he tries to file this criminally through mommy court with the Waterville prosecutor. Now, in, under criminal uh, uh, rules, you know, the, uh, there's a much higher standard, and it's called proof beyond a reasonable doubt, folks, okay? So we go from preponderance of the evidence to proof beyond a reasonable doubt. If he didn't have that much evidence to have a protection order issued against me, how in the heck is he going to prove to the court that I committed a crime? There was no crimes committed. Um... What saddens me is that John Walls just not, did not receive any admonishment um, for putting me through that, putting his attorney, uh, putting, putting the court through that, okay? That's the sad thing is that to this point, he has not been admonished um, for anything that he's done or is doing. Uh, it's over five minutes. I just got a couple more things I want to share with you, so I'll be right back. Thanks. Hey, folks, back at you. Uh, I, I was last talking to you, I think I was mentioning that uh, it was sad that, you know, John Wallace hadn't been admonished yet um, by the court or anybody else for, you know, for spreading the lies. Uh, the community hasn't come together, um, you know, to shut his Facebook page down. Because in my opinion, the Waterville Police Department uh, discussion page, quote, not uh, run by the Waterville Police Department, is is really fraud um he's on there speaking in the third person so you don't know who you're talking to um he is uh borderline impersonating a police officer if you ask me my opinion um with his page he's uh answering people's questions when they're um they don't even know who he is and uh one thing i noticed that he did block me from commenting on um the uh, Facebook, his Facebook, fake Facebook page or Waterville discussion page. Um, I just like to talk about community for a second. Um, community, you know, members or citizens of a community, we're, you know, we come together. Uh, that's what communities are supposed to do. And John Walls, um, you know, he committed a crime. He, he, uh, just plain and simple, he was arrested for disorderly conduct and um, he had to deal with it. And he got in trouble, and um, you know, of course, uh, you know, I, I, I imagine, I, you know, if I, I can understand his situation, he doesn't uh, put, uh, particularly like the police department or the police officers in it. Um, but uh, you know, does that give him a right to go down and you know uh, tell a bunch of lies and you know have drag me into court and put me through all that he did in the past year? Um, John Walls committed a crime. Um, I'm not going to say he's a criminal. He, uh, he engaged in criminal activity. He was arrested for it. And, um, you know, uh, this is just the uh, symptom of John Walls' greater problem, if you ask me. 
But when people commit crimes, um, to me, they're saying they don't want to be part of the community. Um, that's why we have courts and that's why we have jails, etc. So, you know, for him to commit a crime, disorderly conduct, failure to provide personal information, to behave the way he did, like a spoiled 10-year-old boy who can't uh, take no for an answer, um, then, you know, he had to pay the piper for it. And, uh, but as a community, um, he's not acting like a member of the community because he's trying to divide the community. Um, he's trying to create dissension among the ranks, if you will, um, and trying to make the police department look bad, make me look bad. Um, if anything, I do enough myself to make myself look bad. I don't need him to help me. Um, so anyway, my ultimate goal, again, is to uh, get people to look at everything, to look at the evidence, the reports, the complete videos. Um, and then once you reach a conclusion, um, take some sort of action because uh, uh, the more pressure that's put on him to stop doing what he's doing, um, uh, then maybe he'll stop doing what he's doing and shut that fake pa Facebook page down. And um, if any of the Waterville City Council members watch these videos, um, I'm going to call on you, call you out, uh, because um, he's been directly involved with a number of you, and um, you can stop this also. So, uh, again, um, I hope everybody had a wonderful Christmas. God bless, and take care. Bye-bye.